Oh yeah, there needs to just I just want to make a little announcement first of all. So um, we're here doing a um, sort of a tutorial with our good friend Jimmy Mubo. Hi Hello. Jimmy, thank you. He's come in. He's the um, the super tech when it comes to graphics for us. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, start, and this is all about pushing graphic signals, video signals, and uh, we're going to suggest that anytime you guys start um, with any type of program that you always do a factory reset on not only the pulse but your projectors so that you're starting from ground zero and moving up from there. So the first thing I do, even be before I start with computers, you have to think of video as a house. A house with a front door and several doors in between and a back door. So how do you get a clear view, the best clear view of the backyard? Is there a basement? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no basement. <laughs> so the thing is, you have to have all the doors in line open to the maximum. Otherwise, if you have the front door wide open, mm -hmm. and you have the back door wide open, but the, the door in between is halfway, mm -hmm. there's no way you can see the outside perfectly. All the doors have to be open straight straight through. So what people do is, whenever they find they have a, a video issue, is because if, if this is, let me draw a rudimentary house here. And this, is, this is like a, 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 a cube, right? So, if this is your area of interest, it's just this section of the cube, and there's a corresponding one on the back end, you have to make sure that what goes in is what comes out. Now, you've heard that term, it's called native. It's a native resolution, it's a native everything. So, if you set everything to native, it should be good, but we'll come back to native later. So, if there's things in between this point and this point that hinder the line of sight, what you get at the end will always be compromised and you cannot tell where it is in the chain. And that's why we always do a factory reset. Factory reset opens all the doors. Alright, so first thing you always do when you get a switcher, no matter how fresh or whatever you think it is, is you go to the menu, go to your control, enter, scroll to the bottom, make both values, enter, and select Back to factory reset. You may see things happen, but basically it's going to wipe everything. So that's the first thing you do. And that way you know you're starting with everything open, there's nothing hindering you, there's no confusion. So Could you uh, just do that one more time, Jimmy, so that I got a close up on where you're going in the menu? Sure thing. So factory reset, menu, control, enter, scroll to the bottom to default values. Enter and say yes, and it will do a reboot. I do erase memories and then reset layers, and then I do factory reset last. I would have default values. There's no, there's no problem in doing all three, uh, but in my experience, I always do default, default values. Perfect, right? But then whenever I go to like uh, save a logo, I find the logo is still in there, so I have to erase the logo. Right, right, right. But if you've done anything uh, straight with layers, it doesn't help to erase the layers as well. So I would say do all three if there's any questions. So, uh, first things first, <clears throat> this cable is DVI-1, which you can see is there, and that computer is coming DVI-2, so seven. So the first thing you do is, when you do a reset, you have to tell the switcher what resolution you want. Because remember, the computers will always default, if they are recent computers, to uh, 1920 by 1080. But if you reset, you'll notice that when you come to main out, after the reset, if you go to the format, it's 1024 by 768. This is because this is an older device from the VGA days. If you look at most of the ends, right. they're VGA. Even the button. So the first thing you do is go and change your resolution to 1920 by 1080, and you can do 169. Uh, there's HD, there's B and C. I always hear HD, but I don't know. What's the difference between 169 and HD? 169 is a is a aspect ratio. Right. And HD is a resolution thing. They're not related. But in my opinion, there's no difference between the two right. on this setting. Okay. There's no difference. Because 19 by 1080, 1920 by 1080 is HD. Okay. So 69 HD, so far, I have not come across anything. Okay. So 69 works. Okay. Come here, uh, main out. Yeah. Output format. Change it to 69. We hit enter to select it. So where was it that you went? Oh, you're just doing the main out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, main out. I went format format. Then I chose 69, but you have to select it. 
How many asks you? 69 at what frame rate? Yeah. So you tell it to be general reference, which it always defaults to either 50 or 60. So just choose 60. Because normally it's 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz. Okay. And then from there you're done. It takes you back to that stage. Now, what else is in the main out menu? You go to enter, output status. It will tell you what you just chose. Right. So for example, if you choose 1920 by 1080 but don't hit enter and you back out, if you go and check the status, it will tell you 1024 by 768 because you didn't hit enter and save. Uh, sorry, you didn't hit enter to select. Okay. So if we go down the menu, format is where we just did all the selections. So I'm going to back out. Uh, output rate, it's going to tell you what you chose, which was 60. Yeah. I'm going to back out. Uh, you don't have to mess with the gamma. Gamma is uh, uh, a depth of blackness. You don't, you don't need to worry. We've had to before, but only because like the, the projector wasn't portraying truly what was on the laptop. Yes. So just by tweaking the gamma a little bit, it brings out some grays yes. sometimes. Some the only there. problem I have uh, seen with any time that you start going in and messing with stuff like that is it doesn't just affect the one color. It affects, it affects the entire the thing. Right. So you can get yourself into trouble. I mean, everybody needs to be aware that when you start messing with your color corrections and things like that, it doesn't just affect that one logo, it's going to affect everything in your presentation. So um, we've got the uh, switcher has been um, reset. We've now done the output to 1920 by 1080. So. so another feature you want to check on your output menu is come down to your HDCP detection. And a lot of times when you find that you're plugging stuff in and not, you're not getting anything, um, read up on HDCP protection. Basically, it's a form of copyright protection that was introduced to prevent people from unauthorized copying of sources. How'd you get there again? I'm sorry. Uh, if, you go to, output. if you go to your main out, yeah. you know, along with the output format and all that, go down to HDCP protection detection. So what does what are we supposed to do when turn, we get turn, to that? Turn point? it off if you can. Turn it off. It's on by default or automatic. Mm -hmm. Disable it. And no, uh, usually when you do it, you see your screens flicker. It's because they need to reinitiate the signal without HDCP detection. Okay. Now, when, let's, let's come out of HDCP with regards to the switcher and go to Mac computers and iPads. Apples, by default, most of them have HDCP protection in them. So depending on the generation, depending on the year, depending on the way. Like a MacBook Air, most of them do have it. So sometimes when you like plug in a playback, uh, sorry, a MacBook Pro, uh, you will plug it in and when you choose the screen, you get gray. And you're like, what's happening? That's your HDCP protection. The Mac is not recognizing this as an authorized device to allow the signal to pass through. Mm -hmm. So normally, in order to see a HDCP protected content, your source has to be protected and your display has to be protected in any modifiers. So basically, if you work at Sony, your laptops are, have HDCP protection. Any modifiers that you have have the same protection, and any displays, screens, projectors have to have that. If none of them have it, if you're, if you're, uh, if you have a showing of the newest movie, and you don't have the right components, you won't get the final thing. So that's how they protect their movies, their content. If you have an opponent in the Mac, first thing to do is turn off HDCP. Yeah, but I mean, first when you say problem, you just what, uh, just like a gray yeah, screen, it'll, it'll, be a light, showing, it'll be a light gray screen, okay. or it'll be a green screen. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's you make the switch. should you turn that off regardless of whether you're having an issue or not? Should that I, be like I, a, a go-to? I turn it off for PCs. I turn it off for everything. Do you? Yeah. Okay, okay. so and that's on the output, so it affects everything. It's on the output and also on the input. We're, we're coming to inputs. Right now, we're just setting the main app. Okay. But uh, the HDCP is also in the input menu. Whenever you plug in a computer and go to you know, HD, uh, HDMI 1 or DVI 1, turn it off. Turn, turn HDCP protection off because that eliminates you having a door closed in the path that you're not aware of. Because you'd be like, I'm so putting stuff in. And turn why it off on the inbound and turn it off on the outbound. On the outbound. Right. So this, if you, if you ever have a copyrighted source, an analog way switch is a good way to bypass that. Uh, yesterday they had an event with people who were doing digital uh, caricatures, like, you know, they had an iPad with art, mm -hmm. and they had their own TV. So, it was calibrated to show what they were showing, but the moment I put a DA in between, the TV would get the signal, 
but the DA would not connect to any other source, which means somehow the iPad could detect that I was trying to split the signal from one main device to something else. So sometimes different manufacturers have different HDCP protocols. In that case, the dongle had no protection to the TV, but their dongle had an issue with Extron DAs. And Extron DAs are notorious for not allowing HDCP protection. Right. So you sometimes it's a device thing, sometimes it's a manufacturer thing. I just turn everything off if I can, and this okay. device. So HDCP protection off, off. in bound out bound. Then uh, once you get, uh, once you've done your HDCP, go to your test pattern, and once you choose something, then you can see if your output is working. So sometimes before you know you're, you're connected to everything and you haven't connected your projector yet, set it like this and then go fix your projector. The moment you turn it on, you choose the right input. Boom! You should have your your test patterns. And these just you know just different colors. And we usually go to the green just to. And they're all factor. and they're all built into the pulse. The pulse has those built in. Yes. And and of course a lot of the projectors have them built in as well. Yes. Um, which would be your preference for tweaking using the pulse patterns or something that's built in to a projector? Uh, or a PowerPoint slide. Or a PowerPoint. Yeah, we have a series of PowerPoint slides that we include that have very I use, things. I use all three. And I use all three depending on things because sometimes I have to set up projection and the switcher is not in the room. So then I use a test pattern on the projector. But uh, you have to be careful because some projectors have native resolutions mm -hmm. and the test pattern always shows at the native. So sometimes you'll adjust the screen with a 1920 by 1200. Uh, that happened to us in Portland. Remember Ed framed in the projector on the screen with the test pattern on the projector. And then, we put the pipe of grape and we did the, uh, the yeah. bottom rounds based yeah. on that. And then when we got the switcher graded, it was it's totally different. different. Yeah. So my thing is, I base everything based on the final image. Yeah. And also the, the, well, the, the, problem the, the content is yeah. in uh, 69. And only the screen is 69. So I just make everything 69 again because I don't want doorways in between to have different, uh, different, different openings. All right, so we set the output menu. So I'm going to go to the main out and take away this test pattern. So literally, we know this projector, um, this setup is good. The switcher is going through. So we're going to turn that off. And then, once, since we've connected both these computers, uh, if I hit DVI 1, I see that my preview. So the first thing you do is after you set your main out, Go to your preview because that image is not that, it looks stretched. So I haven't set my preview. So you come to your main menu, instead of your main out, go to the next step and go to your preview out. And duplicate everything. And uh, go to your output format, exactly. Duplicate it, go to 1920 by 1080, uh, 69. And you'll notice it reinitiates uh -huh. the signal. So internal reference is 60 hertz, and select it. Now, if you notice, now that looks more like that. Right. Because now it's saying, okay, this is a 69 image coming in, 69 image going out, and I'm also previewing it in a correct fashion. Because before it looks skewed, and you're, you're like, which is correct? What's happening here? Is, it, is that correct and everything else is distorted? So this is opening everything to look the same. But the first preview was I'm sorry. It's not necessary to change the preview, but sometimes you'll have graphics, and since they're stretched here, it'll confuse you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll yeah. be like, this looks different. So you're like, should I make that look like this? And then you start messing with the projector and stretch it. Or you change aspect ratios there to match. So just set everything the same. Mm -hmm. Remember, same for open your program all the out, the main program preview, same thing. Because okay. the preview now is, is, that, is a preview is uh, a sample of what you're about to send out. Right, so right. didn't you want it to look similar? Yeah. Why would you want something here looking different than that? That's just I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much very easy to set that. Now, the preview out has the same options as output. So as you can see, we can see the image. So the protection doesn't matter whether it's on or on. Right. But you should still disable but it. Sometimes you have a monitor that doesn't work. So come here and disable it. You'll notice it, it re initiates the, the connection. So what I'm taking for our, for our final cliff notes thing is regardless of whether you're having an issue or not, you should disable HDCP in both the main app. That's and a good one. I never thought. By I default. Touch I never that. really no, no. mess with that. Normally monitors don't have issues, but you come across some that will not display unless you turn it off for some reason. HDCP detection is 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 from the devil. Since we're doing, uh, working on the premise that we're going to do a factory reset before every show, go back and turn your HDCP off. 
So once you set your preview out, you also have a test panel at the end where you can test your preview to make sure your preview is okay. So again, it has a grid, it has all the test patterns. So again, you can test your main out and your preview out. So we're done with the preview now. Going back to the main menu. What's the basis of every house? Is a frame. That's how I remember this. This is how I taught myself analog way because the logic of the analog way, which is French, is reversed from the faults of presentation and image work. Mm -hmm. Absolute reverse. Same device, workflow is totally different. So the key about the analog way is you need to remember the word frame. And then you have to remember whenever you're in a show, what's live. So I'll, I'll key those in later, but those are two key words. And that will take away all your confusion as to what's happening where. Because these buttons will show different things depending on whether you're in the background live or background frame. So just remember, at the base, at the root of everything, because Analog Way has layers, the back layer is your background frame. So remember, if you have something on your layer and you black it out, the background frame is going to show through. So what do you put in your background frame? That's where you put your logo. So the background is always there no matter what? Background frame is, it always exists. You choose what to put in front of it. You choose DVI-1, DVI-1 shows up. You choose DVI-2, DVI-2 shows up on it. You clear DVI-2 and do nothing, background frame shows through. So the background frame is where you're going to save your logo slide, is exactly. that correct? And we knew that, but it just seemed like it was more steps to get to that logo that way versus just taking a, a logo on it or one and just yeah. choosing it. You know, we'd always have to have a third laptop. If you have a third laptop, it's just another input. It's yeah. a quick and dirty solution. Yeah. I do that many times based on you know speed and complexity. Yeah. But I'll show you how to do it in a way that will work. Okay. Now, we haven't really configured the inputs yet. So let's go to the input menu and see what's happening. So you go to the root menu. Choose input and go to your DVI-1. Now this would be any input, but I'm plugging DVI-1. So hit enter, and it will tell you what's happening with that input. So if you go to type, it will tell you it's set on that input type. Now this is based on whether you're using a specific type of DVI, or if it's RGB, or um, plus H, plus V, plus, these are different video uh, input types. Leave it on default. Um, if you have had an issue with it, auto set it, because sometimes you have an issue unplugging, replugging, you're like, where's the problem? Auto set uh, is a default for that input alone. Whenever I have an issue with something, yeah. I unplug and replug, yeah. Yeah. make sure HDCP is off. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, I auto set it. Yeah. Because an auto set is a computer forcing a handshake. For right. example, if you do HDMI, a reset is an unplug, replug, but right. an SDI, uh, once you plug it in, there's no way really to reset it apart from do an auto set. Yeah. An auto set is a software handshake yeah. reinitialization, yeah. basically. Like, Isn't there an auto set all option which will do it? Is there on auto input? set all? Yeah. If you go to input, yeah. you can auto set all. You do it if you have all inputs working except one. You just want to do it with the input you have no problem with. Okay. That's why that right. feature is there. Right. So, so if they all are working, then, <laughs> then you can do the all. You so if you're, if you're connecting things and you're getting nothing, there's more to it than just auto setting. There's something you're something doing wrong. If you notice, in DVI-1, we have... The HDCP is enabled, yeah. It's enabled. So if for some reason I'm having no input, and I know this is plugged in, you come and you disable that. Okay. And here's an edit set. So edit is, stands for extended display identification. So basically edit is a way of this device letting the input know what resolutions it can support. Most computer graphics card can support a slew of, of resolutions, including 1920 by 1080. But sometimes you have a weird one like 1680 by 1050. Some laptops have a, you know, like some, remember the netbooks? The yes. small laptops that had a nine inch screen. Yeah, 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 they yeah. could never do full HD, they could never go nineteen twenty. So there's they used to max out at you know thirty six six yeah. by seven six eight, yeah. something weird. Yeah. So yeah. you'd have to make sure that edit was in here, which most likely it is, but it's not not as thirty six by ten twenty four. So you would have to come and make one. Right. So when whenever you mess with an edit, you're now telling the switcher, okay switcher, you can now communicate with the source and see if it can give you this resolution. 
So if you have a, having a resolution issue, just make sure that your 1920 by 1080 is available and yeah. submit. Because you want this to ask this for 1920 by 1080. Right, right, right. And now you saw my example earlier. It wasn't giving me that option. Exactly. Now, the problem is you have to, the, there's a graphics card in here and there's a graphics card in here that talk. And that's called the handshake. So the moment you edit and eat it in here, you have to redo the handshake. Right. Because this doesn't know that that's available. That's what you want it, to plug it. But the computer was unaware. The computer was like, as for the last handshake, I only have these two resolutions. A lot of so if you did a handshake, you'd be like, oh, guess what? I now discovered a device that will take this resolution. So the computer would be like, I can push the name to That's huge. So, and the way to do that is just to unplug the HDMI out of the laptop and plug it back in? Yes. Yep. So you reinitiate the handshake after you assign the EDID to the 1920. Exactly. And our solution was just let's just not use that laptop <laughs> <laughs> because we were like we get ready to start. Well, you got to do what you got to do. I always uh, I hate that too. It's like just leave well enough alone yeah. at this point. Sometimes, when, if you have enough time, you can do anything. But in our world, things happen at show time. Exactly. So sometimes yeah. you just bring oh. another laptop and yeah. just just go with it. They show up at the worst time. So I said that's going to be backup from now on. Yep. So um, the other option is just to verify that what you chose is what it is. So 920 by 1080, just make sure everything matches. And then the status tells you it's DVI 1, and that's what the computer is sending you. Cool. So these are ways to verify that what you're getting is what it is, and obviously it's what's going out. So that's how you know that it's coming out 920 by 1080. This is seeing it and sending it out, and therefore that is correct. That's where numbers would be different a lot of times. They would be getting something different here. And, and let's say you have uh, an Acer, an MSI, a Mac, and a Dell. I mean, sometimes we do have that when we have crazy shows. All of them, as long as the resolution on the laptop is 1920 by 1080. Yes. Remember, ultimately, you would connect this to the projector and go. This, its job is just to switch between the laptops. So you need this to be as, as least of an interfering device right. as possible. So everything needs to be everything the same. Everything needs to be the same. Including so the that, project. So that that right. shows every computer the yeah. same. Otherwise, if you have this at one resolution, this at what yeah, right. that would change. I was like, this part of this job as a scaler was to take everything with different conglomerations and make them all uniform. It, it does that as well. Because sometimes you have a weird, uh, weird source. And the job is to make that source fit to the screen. So you can you can come here and change an input and say I want this input, I'm going to change the resolution here. Okay. But what happens when you change the resolution here, get an edit to match it, what happens is let's say you want 1024 by 768. It uh, this device will query the computer, the computer will send you that lower resolution and you will send that 1024 by 768 out. Got it. The switcher is saying I'll send out what you give me. But you're using it to adjust different sources. Yeah, okay. And we always have different computers. This job is to make it all uniform. And nowadays, all computers can give you 1920 by 1080. So why not use this to just show you the computers as they're meant to be seen? But people use this and screw around with settings, and all of a sudden, every computer is different and doesn't need to be. And that's where you see things that are not right, and you wonder why is this input good and this one's bad. It's not that they're all doing 1080, but somehow one input is set differently. Okay, here's a, a crazy question, but it still applies to some of our clients. We still do four by three fast wall screens every now and then. Do mm -hmm. uh, you still want the in, the output and everything to be that that 69, or do you want it to be a 1024 by 768 or something for your square image? Yeah. So here's the deal: are there presentations? The first thing I always ask is, what are you giving? Me? They're both. If all their presentations are four three and the screen is 403, then you have to set your switcher to 403. Yeah. You may have the projector. And the projector to 403. Yeah. Because you have to set everything to be the same. Because yeah. if I have uh, 403, 403, but that is 69, you'll have this weird image that has black bars on the side. And you're, you're going to be like, okay, how can I, am I, am I going to use fill one to one? How do I make it work? Just set everything right, and the end image should fit neatly. Yeah. The moment someone has a 69 presentation, the 1080 is a smaller image, and you, it just doesn't fill the screen, which is correct, but the whole setup has been prioritized for a 4 3 client. Right. Yeah. So I understand just. Uh, um, Jimmy, what happens when you're in a situation where you have a mixed bag? Some people are in 169 and some are in 4 3. 
they just uh, the client just has to realize that we're gonna we need to pick one or the other to fit and then the other um, resolution uh, is going to either have bars you're either going to have bars on the outside or you're yes. going to have bars on the top and the bottom whenever you have a, whenever you have a mixed bag then the question becomes what screen do you have because if it's a 69 screen then it's an empty 69 yeah. and then the fourth content will show small as long as the client realizes that yeah. whatever content they're giving us that no. we can't do both we can only do one or the other based on your screen you based on your screen four, three, and because four. especially you're going to get bars either way many yeah. conferences you have doctors who have been using templates for trying uh, to yeah. so there's always four three yeah. then you have tech savvy people who have everything 69 yeah. so whenever you're selling the show you always have to be do you want hd lots of them will be like yes some of them will be like no i want this old style but then you have to tell them if someone brings a 69 presentation it's going to look smaller but then some clients would be like, no, I want everything 69. Then you have to tell them, you know, who brings anything forward. But if I see a presentation, I can tell you if an instance will be strong. I'll tell you, no, I can't fix it. Or yes, I can't fix it. It depends on what's in the presentation. Right. And for lots of people, they have uh, x-rays or some stuff. And you're like, if I stretch it, it will expand. Yeah. Or if I stretch it and we turn it back to the normal image, then you have these bars, white bars yeah. inside. The PowerPoint background will show through, right. which you can color. But it takes time, and lots of people have hundreds of slides. Yeah. So based on prep time, I'll, the route is when you're selling the event or getting the event, you have to ask the client. You have a 69 screen, mm -hmm. and someone comes with a presentation that has, well, are, you, are you aware that you're going to have bars? And if that's an acute problem, then they should tell their presenters, guess what? Yeah. Everything has to be 16. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Okay, so we just looked at inputs. So always make sure that HTCP is off on your inputs because a lot of times your problem is your input HTCP. And um, a lot of devices will rear their ugly head at that point. Not even so much the outputs, the inputs. Because most projectors allow content to be connected to the And with the input, you uncheck the box to disable it. Uncheck the box to disable it. And if you have any issue with that, you always either unplug, replug, or do an auto set to refresh it. If by any chance it doesn't have to set it back immediately, yes, exactly. That's good. So HTCP off and the output, main out, preview out, and the inputs. Everywhere. Turn it off everywhere. Whenever I set up a switcher, I set everything and I spend time. I usually spend like five to ten minutes just sitting and blanking everything out and turning everything off. Like sometimes you have a show where you never know, you may get a Playback Pro and usually they are Macs. And if I know that Mac is going to be coming into a particular input, I go to that input and I turn the HTCP off. Because most Playback Pros, by default, you plug them in, uh, the reruns. Uh, whenever you plug them in, you don't get anything until you turn it off. Mm -hmm. And the way it shows up, normally it's a gray screen, just like the gray coloring. Right. It'll be a gray screen. Mm -hmm. and the, minute, the moment I see that, I know it's HTCP, turn it off and you're out of that. Beautiful. Okay. So, you have your switcher set up, so normally if you hit your preview, you see what's on your input, and then when you switch, it takes, and to see your other input, which is your second computer on DVI 2, this previews it, and to take it live, you just hit take, and that's live. Now, you notice I use the word live, because we are on the background live layer, okay? So, background live is what we work in background live. I'm switching between the same two inputs on the live layer. So client comes in and says, I want a logo. How do we do that without a laptop? Get the logo up. I created one here, just call it logo one. So what you do is you take it, okay? On your live layer, okay. you have just showed your logo. Come to your menu and you go to your logo slash frame okay. uh, option. Check the capture source. Is the capture source that or this? Because mm -hmm. you can have a presentation happening in progress, but you could be previewing that, uh, and you can say, I want that to be the logo. And you can be saving a logo while the presentation is going on. You just have to say, my logo is coming from preview, or my logo is coming right, from right. program. Okay. So that's a, that's a versatile way of, of saving a logo if a client is like in the middle of a conversation and yeah. say, hey, can you put this up? When they're doing? So normally, you, um, I, I always ask clients for a holding slide, a crash slide, a logo slide before the event starts, because I don't want them giving me logos in the middle. What happens when someone gets to the end of the PowerPoint and they hit the black screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always want to, I, always, I never start an event without a logo slide or a, a laptop with a logo on it. 
So there are um, there are really good um, times or um, where using these types of scenarios are good, but there are also potential major problems that can happen. So, <laughs> so if a client comes and says, I would like the main presentation to be on the big screens, mm -hmm. but on my confidence monitor, I want to see my notes. How can I make that happen? Uh, hello. Now, what happens is the confidence monitor has to be fed by a separate laptop yeah. showing oh, the same right. presentation right. 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 in a different view. Which is why you need the perfect queue. Which is you need the perfect queue to sync both of them with one, okay? Now, um, analog way is very confusing in how it calls logos, logos, and frames. What we call a logo for a client is what they call a frame. Because for them, a frame is a screen. For us, a logo means the client's background image. So that's a mismatch in names. So I'll show you what happens. And usually a client says, can I have a logo or a folding slide? So for that to happen, you send, uh, you, you take your Take your main screen, and then you come and tell, come to the main menu and go to logo frame, capture source. Are you capturing from the program or the preview? I always like to capture from the program because I'm doing it ahead of time, so the rooms you know yeah, not yeah. in session. So I'm using main out, and then you come to report frame, frame one. And it showed a little white. It's capturing. It's capturing that. It's a new capture. If I was recording this. Have a white box around that. Mm -hmm. So let it get to hundred percent. It takes a minute. And okay, so I'm gonna show everybody while it's mm -hmm. because for those of you not here. This I'll explain this confusion yeah. later. We are capturing because logo this particular means slide, and you can see the white that line that's running all the way around the perimeter of that slide. That's showing that that's the one that we are capturing versus the preview monitor, which there is no white line running around it. Okay, so now I'm recording. I just I copied graphics one of logo. I want to record logo one so you know it's a logo. And there was uh, there were multiple positions to save yes. some frames. So you can you can one. save six okay. frames. Now, the, you said you could also capture it from preview. That could be done like on the fly, like while you're running live or something. That could be done on the fly, and we'll do one as well. So this is just the basic capturing, you know, what, what you have before the event begins. And once it's done, it's done. It'll tell you, okay, now it's done. So when that happens, I exit that screen, and I can change my slide to, let's say I'm back to my presentation. Let me make, make it something radically different. Mm -hmm. So this is my presentation, everything's going live. Where, what did I save to where's my logo? Yeah. So what happens is you remember background frame. Background frame, that's where your logo went. It went to analog ways background frame. So you go to background frame and you save it as number one. There it is. So that channel is taken out by that logo. So slot, that's slot frame. Frame slot one is taken by what you just saved as number one. So you basically lose an input. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, it's just you're showing different. you something. It's only when you're in background. You're in a different submenu. This is background frame. Oh, I get it. Slot one. I get it. So now, if you hit take, you have now put that image on top of your background frame. If you have one image. Basically now, your background frame has been painted with logo one, with this image. So, if you go back to the background live, and someone's going through their presentation, and now you want to go to logo. So how do you, how do you, this is where, this is, this is where your logo is, right? Your background frame. This is your presentation, this is DJI one. Okay. How do you show the logo? Black this up, make this transparent, whatever. You make this go away. So how what you, how you do it is while you're in live, which is where we all work, because remember we work on the live, I'm changing between these two inputs. So if I'm in DVI one, I go to background live where I am, choose black, and take it. Yep. So I just did this. Right. And I knew all that, but I like I said, it's too many steps when too you're on the steps, fly, it's fly. so much easier to have a third laptop with the logo. Exactly. So that's where it is, and if I want that to go away and I want to put my content back on, go back to your live layer, 
choose your DVI and bring it oh. back. So remember, frame and live. That's cool. Yep. So it's a cool feature to have if you know what you're using. Yes. So logo in analog way world means something else. Yes. For us, logo means a frame. save a pattern frame. Mm -hmm. So that's a big confusion. That confused me for a long time. Yep, us too. Uh, is there anything else? Well, so, so these uh, these are made in Australia, and one one feature about these decimators, because I've been using them for a long time now, is the first thing to go is the inside of this plug. Inside this plug, the bracket that holds it is kind of glued together, and there's a fix for it, but you have to send it back to Australia to get it fixed. Um, there's people who are trying to create a 3D uh, printed bracket that you could use to maintain this. But if you're having issues, because sometimes what you're, what you're, what you're um, experiencing the power. is the play, is the power, mm -hmm. is the play I mean, I mean, important. And uh, if you have techs who don't know what they're doing and start jamming stuff, first of all, they're messing the pins up. But second is, if you have a decimator with mileage on it, a lot of times the first issue you get is with that. Mm -hmm. In which case, unscrew this, open it up, and have a look at that port of the inside. You may have to resolder it, or at least just restabilize it. But that's the first thing you do if you get an image that's coming and going whenever you have upside down. Yeah, right, yeah. Also, this is, I guess, B on it. So whenever you see the USB sign, USB that's goes to you. USB. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's a good you know, USB and then yeah, the USB yeah, symbol. The plug yeah, that makes has sense. a little mark on it. So be sensitive with the input. Another thing with these boxes is apart from that, they're pretty sturdy. I've never had any have any issues with the inputs at all. Well, we started this conversation with the decimator guys, which then referred us to some other technical guy, and he mentioned to us that these boxes were never designed to be able to talk to something that is visa compliant. So that's VESA, mm -hmm. which for those of you who don't know, that's the measurement, the standard measurement. Uh, anything that, that's not visa compliant. No, anything that is visa compliant, it's not guaranteed to work with. So that would be anything. Uh, visa is the holes in the back of mountings on monitors, in particular. So if you were trying to use it to convert to SDI to HDMI into a confidence monitor or something that, like that, there's no guarantee that it will work because a confidence monitor is VISA compliant, which means it's got holes for mounting on the back. VISA is like the video industry, recording industries, uh, filmmakers created this um, type of, uh, of, of compliancy. Um, so, like pro, pro video. Yeah, pro video, um, yeah. So. Um, of course, we're not doing that. We're trying to send it to a projector. So I'm not sure why that would be relevant and what our thing was, but it might explain why it might not work trying to send a signal to a confidence monitor. I haven't had any issues with these not working with confidence monitors. And usually, if I have a problem, it's the HDMI jack on the confidence monitor that is so abused that the contact is loose. Mm -hmm. I've had sometimes HDMI just fall out because it's so much traffic to that port. And it just falls out. Well, what about my example of plugging a laptop into it, HDMI to HDMI, and then running a long SDI trunk run to SDI input here and not getting, and it wasn't working. And it almost really screwed up a show for us. I, some things that you just have to be there and analyze each step because if I was you, I'd have tested every step. Because the first thing could have had something to do with the HTCP not being disabled or I mean anything. Well, like. these don't, these don't pass. These don't strip HDCP protection, which means if you have a device that has HD protection on and you plug it into this, nothing will come out the other side. That's exactly why it didn't work, because we were trying to use his MacBook. Yes, it will happen in Macs. So Specific Macs, not all of them, and to, to be honest, it's a brand new one. Is there some way to remedy that, or we're just like shit out of luck using those at the confidence monitor, I mean at the well, podium. The easiest way to do that is to connect that Mac directly to a device like this that successfully strips the HTCP up, then you yeah. can start sending it. But then that means having a device like this and 
podium. At the podium, which we want. Would, and which he, it was, was a case where he, he had to use his laptop and he had to use it at the podium and it was literally an on the fly decision. Yeah. And we had yeah. pre run this and tested it with one of our laptops. It and, was okay. And it was, well, again, I think. I think was it our laptop or was it glitching when it wasn't in PowerPoint, but then when you hit F five, it was fine on the screen. And we were like, well, they're never gonna see anything but that, so I might as well let it go. But then when we hooked his Mac into it, it wouldn't work at all. So in, in general, I think we have to all everybody who's not here keep in mind that when we're dealing with MacBooks, there's inherent issues with compatibility. I can show you how they can work with the bigger decimators. But uh, basically these decimators are bulletproof apart from that. But again, if you have a HTCP protected input, usually HDMI, nothing will come out the other end because these devices are compliant. They they allow the protection to work, so they do not strip the protection. Now, and go from there. Right. So I'm going to run through the, the features of this big decimator really quick. Okay. Uh, the first thing is you can actually plug into this with an old school Android cable, and you can download the decimator, decimator software and access all the options of this through our interface. So that's pretty handy if you don't like, because some people don't like this menu. It's just so confusing, it's little and, you know, it's so you can control, control it with the laptop. Yep, you can control that with the laptop. So I'm going to send my laptop to it and come out of this SDI mm -hmm. into the switcher so that you see what this box does. Mm -hmm. So right now you're going to see graphics one and SDI one. Mm -hmm. So that's the box. The first thing you do with this box, what do you think it should be? The first thing you do with that box mm -hmm. is factory, power it down. Factory reset. Or factory reset. Well, when you when there's no on-off switch, so oh, the moment okay. you plug it in, it's right. powered on, there's no right. off. So first thing is a factory reset. No matter what, no matter where you get it from, brand new in a box, oh, it's, it worked last time, right, right, right. factory reset. So the first thing you do is you go to uh, setup. I'm sorry, let me go back. Uh, there's an option that says setup. Yeah. Enter, load defaults. So that wipes away everything. It's, it's, right. It doesn't do anything fast. It's, 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 like it's, 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 it's instantaneous. Yeah. I mean, it kills it, but yeah. it's instantaneous. Yeah. It doesn't take time. Yeah. So this device does a lot. The first thing it does is HDMI in, HDMI out. So you can use it as a pass through. Okay. Uh, HDMI in could also be assigned to SDI out, okay. which is fantastic. SDI in, be assigned to SDI out, and SDI in could also come out HDMI out. Okay. And also, it has a feature where SDI in mm -hmm. could come out these two split, and you could also send HDMI in to these two SDIs. You could separate instead of this being right. one in, four out, you could make it one in, two out, and use the other two for something else. Mm -hmm. So, this does a lot of work. Plus, this even has test patterns in it. People don't realize that. So if you have nothing and you just want to test a line, you just plug the decimator and you can set a test pattern. So uh, the things that matter here are load defaults. So the moment you get one set up, load defaults. We're good. Um, S tells you if there's a standard uh, signal sent into it, like uh, not H. -E. H tells you, sorry, S stands for SDI, if there's anything coming in SDI. H tells you what's coming in HDMI. Okay. And D tells you what it's sending out. So it's, D always has a value. It's always set to send out 1080i5994. Skipping on to the back to the decimator, this will be really quick. So we reset the defaults. So usually the home screen tells you what's happening. So right now, if I take out my computer, you saw how mm -hmm. HDMI says no signal. Yeah. The moment I plug HDMI in, it'll tell you. It's getting 3G SDI, uh, 3G signal, 1080p at 5994, basically 60. All right. 60 hertz. So without even having a device connected to this, you can tell whether your computer is working. You know, because people are like, oh, I don't have my computer is exporting. I can't tell. You can tell here that this decimator sees the computer, okay. and you can also tell that the decimator can output 1080i. Okay. So. It's working, we just have to tell it where to send it. So the next step on this is you go to control. Mm -hmm. The arrow keys just cycle through the options. So once you go to control and you say enter, SDI source by default is SDI in. In this case, we want the SDI outsource to be my HDMI. So you change that by hitting enter. So we're good with that setting. The S goes away after a second. The S means it's going to, it's going to auto save that feature. 
So you let the S disappear and that's now saved. Which means if I unpower, if I turn this box off and turn it on, this stays. Saves. But as a habit, you should always be yeah. yeah. But in case we were using this setup, like this decimator is always used in a particular room the same way and just keep the same settings. So in that case, if I set my SDA out HDMI in, why don't I have image right now? Now you have to realize I told you that this could be a one by four or one by two. Right now this will be by default is a one by two. So that's why I have to come here and go to the settings. Uh, HDMI outsource, I don't really care about it right now, so I'm just gonna skip. Uh, HDMI out type, it defaults to that, which is good. Uh, RGB 444 is a color space, it's a it's a color, it has to do with how many bits of, how many bits are used in the processing of color. So I'm going to leave that out. And 2C is two channels of audio. We, know, we try not to use audio and video here through it because this is assuming two channels of, right, right. of yeah. audio coming to the HDMI. And by the way, SDI can send sound as well. Yes, yes. So if you have a transmitter on the other yeah. hand, transferring to HDMI, you can get audio. Um, you look, you skip this out. Skip the reference, no signal color. This is, if you want no signal, what you want to show through on the decimator. So I can set this to black or I can set this to something else. So let's say green for now. And we'll come back to this later. And then green and then back. So um, this output, output one is loop, is set to yes. So output this is output one, output this is output two. So output one right now is set to loop the input. But I want these four to act as the same. As I want these to act as the same output. So I have to come and say no. Now once I do that, it comes to the control. Most people connect the decimal and say, I did everything, I have no output. By default, you have to say output loop, no. That way it acts as a one to four distro, which means if I send something to the SDI out, it's going to come out of each one of these four. So when you um, when you do a factory reset on it, the default is to have... Default is, is yes. It defaults to yes. And we need it to be no. We need it to be no. Okay. Uh, otherwise, if you have it on yes, uh, you would need to plug this into output two for it to work. Which I think is what we did a couple of times. We had issues with it not... Uh, well, I know you needed to, but that comes yeah, in there. Yeah, because so right we now, missed one of the settings. Right now, I could send that camera through this and send this to a key probe. So I could use this box to do something something separate with this, this set of inputs and outputs. So it's handy for that, mm -hmm. but it's confusing as to why this is working and that's not working. It's because the loop was set to yes versus no. So if the loop is set to yes, it means that SDI input is looping through output one. This is a closed system right here. So if you're sending anything to SDI out, it's going to come out. But if you have say out of a factory, you could just plug it into there and you'd be good. Oh yeah, if if you know if you know that's why, then just use. We we figured it out by yeah. trial and error without going into the menu. I just tried the this, different outputs and I was like, well, this one's working. Uh, that's <laughs> that's why because they assume you want to use this in it's, it's for more than what we're using it for, which is obviously you're going to use that and do stuff. So. Yeah. So if you still work, but we don't need it. Exactly. Can do more, but it's not required to do so. But that's why people plug this in and they're like, it's not working, it's not working. It's you know, just like that to know. And it was okay, that's very handy to know. And then you have um, scaling. Uh, I ran this into what is the last book we had? General Dynamics. General Dynamics. The key pros do not see mm -hmm. anything that is 60 frames a second, key pros only see 30 frames and less. 